let me tell you, it is the most wonderful thing when Molly decides to get me a whole mess of candy like this. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know I have a little bit of a problem when it comes to candy. But uh, I mean, it's not, it's not really a problem per se. I guess, I guess it just depends on who you ask. But all candy aside, I kind of want to talk about the overall thought process that goes into me completing a software engineering task. I want to start off with something simple, a front end component, because I figured that would be easier to go about in this video because it's something that you can visualize instead of a back end component where, you know, you're not, you can't really point at something and say, hey, look, I built that. You can say, hey, look at the code, but with a front end component, you can say, hey, look, I built that. So I think it'll make things a little bit easier because we're not necessarily focusing on what's being built because I'm not really going to be doing much coding in this video. I'm trying to take you through the thought process and how I go about completing a task because, you know, a lot of people just want to hop in and start coding straight off the get, but there are a few steps beforehand that I like to take. So this may not be a recommendation video for how you should go about it. This is just me letting y'all know how I go about it. And maybe you can take some of these tips and you can apply them to your own workflow. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to hop on into this computer here and I've created a mock Jira board. And right now what you're looking at in this mock Jira board is an active sprint. So to essentially explain what's going on here, if you don't know, a lot of the times I like to explain programming problems where you have a big problem, like let's say an app that you want to create. You break that app into smaller, more digestible chunks, and you break those chunks into even smaller, more digestible chunks that you can actually complete in a single sitting or maybe over a couple days if it's a bigger one. That's essentially what this is. So you have your software project, that is the whole entire application, and then you break those down into essentially stories, which is what you have right here. So then you, and you log all of those issues into the backlog. So that could be features, bugs, support, what have you. You document everything into the backlog here. And then when you are ready for your sprint planning, what you do during the sprint planning is you drag up whatever issues need to be addressed over the next three weeks, if it's a three week sprint. Come on over to Active Sprints. This is our Active Sprint. And as you can see, we have three stories here for one, for two, for three. And within each story, there are subtasks. And these subtasks are what you are going to be working on initially. Instead of taking on the entire Add Comments to Site, you would take on a Create Comment component, which is just a comment form, or you would display the comments that you are creating with the comment form and storing on the back end and whatnot, right? So instead of just taking all of this on at once and it's like a little bit more confusing, you break it down into subtasks. And what we're gonna be working on today are the build display pricing parameters. So we're gonna pull that over from the to-do section over into the in progress section. We're gonna make sure that that is assigned to us. Otherwise, it would just say unassigned. You wanna make sure that is assigned to you. So you're letting your team know that this is the task that you're working on, it is being worked on that way people aren't working on duplicate tasks because that's just a big waste of time so what I personally like to do after I determine this is what I'll be working on is I take my handy dandy pen and my handy dandy notebook here and I like to essentially draw out the UI component of the front end now people may do it differently than this but I just personally like to do it this way because it allows me to visualize what I'm working on and it just it allows it to make a lot more sense. So when it comes to the pricing parameters, I know that there are four values within this array. There's ID, there's a name, there's a value, and then there's a description. But the admin, mind you, this is the admin page, they don't need to see the ID. That's used for other reasons. They don't really care about that. They need to know about the name, the value, and the description. So what I'll be doing is essentially creating a table where the header are gonna be the name, the value and the description in one row up top and then the the columns underneath each are going to be the various names values descriptions and of course lined up appropriately in the rows or to give you a better idea something like this and don't mind this the scribble scrabble i'm a lefty we're not supposed to have good handwriting so that is basically what i would draw out and then what i like to do afterwards like i said this is my own process and it may change in a week or a month or a year from now, and then maybe I'll make another video, maybe I won't. But when it comes to this, 
I like to work on the HTML and just essentially template that out. And actually something I ought to mention before we hop on into the HTML is that you don't necessarily have an HTML file just yet. So what you want to do is you're going to, we personally use Angular, so what we would do is we would hop on into the particular directory in which we want this component. We would type in ng G stands for generate component because you're generating a component and then the name of that component. What that will do is it will generate a directory with four files in it, a component.html, component.styling, whatever it is, CSS, SCSS, what have you, component.spects, and then component.ts. So TS is your TypeScript, and then uh, spects is essentially your test for that TypeScript. And what we will personally use is a service.ts. So where we sit now is our HTML, that's gonna be obviously our HTML, our UI. Our service.ts is where we're gonna be having those HTTP requests. So like in this example, we're gonna be getting our pricing parameters and then in our component.ts is essentially where we connect the HTML to the service.ts, right? So the way you can think of it, when it comes to UI all the way to back end, you have your UI, so your HTML, your CSS, and then you have the component.ts in our particular instance. And then we have the service.ts, and that service.ts is talking to your API or your backend. So if we just wanna create a basic table here, this is what it will look like. So we have our table, we have our headers. So basically TR stands for table row, TH stands for table header, and our headers are what we discussed earlier, name, value, description. So that will all be in one row. And then we have our body, and this will all be in one row because we have our rows and we have TD. D stands for data, so like a, think of a data cell. And, and instead of just thinking about it, let's show you. This is what it would look like. Basically, you have your table, you have your header, and then you have your row down here. But something else to note is that that row right there, that is essentially gonna be in, encapsulated within a for loop. And all of the stuff that is coming out here, that's where this would come into place. Now, mind you, when you first write your, your little table template, this stuff commented out won't be there, but since, like I said, I've already created this, and I did change up a few of the, the details to disguise it, I just decided to comment them out for ease of use. So, so for all intents and purposes, just ignore the commented stuff when I'm talking about this first step right here. Your next step, that will be hopping on into your service.ts, and this is where it gets tricky. I can't be showing y'all that code, because you know the HTML, that's just a basic table. But the service.ts, that's where we'll be getting our information. That's where we're gonna be writing to get our information. So that will be getting the information from the back end, and that's what I like to do next. So you write that, you connect it to the back end, and you pull over your information. I mean, it's a little bit more difficult to do it than to say it, but I mean, that's that's basically it. That's, you're getting your information. If you need to edit and update something, then that is also where you're gonna be putting your information. So post is when you like say like create a new comment and then putting is if you were to edit that comment, it just updates. So all of those HTTP requests, those, those are gonna happen in your service.ts. Now after that, what I like to do is go into the component.ts to really just tie it all together. And this is one example how to do it, but mind you the error, like I said, I changed up some of these names just to disguise the actual code. And just to go over the bare basics of what this is, is basically get parameters is what we wrote is the method we wrote within the service.ts that will get the parameters and we were using get parameters to respond with the information so generally what I do let's ignore this for now is I will print it out in console log that'll show up in my console and that'll also show up if you hit F12 you go into the console in your web browser and it'll show the information if it's being pulled in properly so what we'll want to be pulling in are the name, the value, basically the whole entire array. That's what this is, the param, this dot param. And that is just a proof of everything is working properly and going all the way from the back end to your UI. And then I'll throw in something like this. There's no particular reason other than sometimes, depending on what this is right here, in our instance, it's an array. It could be a little bit nuancy in how exactly you want to display it in your user interface. So that's why I just like to have a little proof of concept. I show the response in the console log, otherwise it'll show an error in the console log, 
and then I go from there. And just something else to quickly note, after I complete each one of these things that we just discussed, I like to commit. Not push and check in my code, but commit, just in case I mess up along the way and I need to revert back. Because small commits, like I said in a previous video, are much better than one large commit because it just makes your life easy. And as for this particular task, that's basically it. I tried to show you some decent examples so you had a better understanding of what I was talking about. So I do hope that helped you out. And I would like to recap basically everything. If I wasn't so long-winded, this is essentially what the whole entire video would be. What I like to do, once I pull over a particular task, a front-end task, mind you, is I visualize what the front-end, the UI, is going to look like. I draw it out in my little notebook here. I generate that particular component, and then I template out the user interface. After I template out the user interface, I go into my service.ts file, and I write the web service call, the HTTP request, in order to gather the information from the back end or from the API that is going to be displayed in the UI. And then I move on over to the component.ts file and I connect the UI to the service by using that method within the service that I just wrote into the component.ts, gathering the data, printing it out into the console to prove that everything is flowing nicely from the back end or the API to the web browser. And then I will display, work on a little bit more in terms of the HTML because I need to make sure that I'm displaying the values within the particular data cells that I want. And then a little bit more fidgeting within the component.ts file and then I'm done. Did that help y'all out at all? I just I, I just figured this would be an interesting video to give you a better understanding of my thought process into completing a particular task. I don't know if this is the right way. I don't know if this is the best way, but this is what I've found to work for me right now. Maybe it'll be different in a week or a month or a year from now, and then maybe I'll make a future video about it then. But for the time being, I think it's fairly efficient, so I'm gonna to stick to it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because that helps me with the algorithm. Comments also help with the algorithm. Well, until next time, guys, have a good one.